Welcome back to a new episode of Animal of the Week. Today we are taking a look at a gelatinous blob known as Malib Viridis. This gelatinous blob looks very much like some sort of alien creature, but I assure you this is from Earth. A member of the phylum Mollusca and the class Gastropoda means this glob is related to snails and slugs. It is a nudibranch, which means it is a type of sea slug, but just in case anyone was wondering, sea slugs aren't necessary nudibranchs. All nudibranchs are sea slugs, but not all sea slugs are nudibranchs. Though these look rather scary, they only grow to about 14 centimeters long, 5.5 inches for the Americans out there. So luckily they can't consume you and absorb your nutrients into their gelatinous bodies. Malib viridis is obviously a sea-dwelling slug, owing to the fact that it is a sea slug. But where in the sea does this sea slug live? These sea slugs live in the Mediterranean Sea, as well as the South China Sea, the Java Sea, and a whole host of other seas around Indonesia that contain many other sea-dwelling slugs called sea slugs. Other than seas, they also live in oceans, the bigger versions of seas. They are found extensively in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, however no matter if these sea-dwelling slugs, known as sea slugs, are living in a sea or an ocean, they always stay near the coast and cannot survive in deeper waters, as they are benthic dwelling animals, meaning they live on the sea floor and can only survive a depth of roughly 10 meters. This means they only inhabit the neuritic zone of the ocean. They require warmer waters like that found in the South China Sea and the tropical regions of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. They're slightly rarer in the Mediterranean than other places, mainly due to it being slightly too far north for their optimum environment, but they survive here nonetheless. It is interesting to note that the reason they made it into the Mediterranean Sea was because of the Suez Canal. They migrated through the canal and into the waters of the Mediterranean, and so now it's thought that speciation has taken place, where these Mediterranean Malib viridis have evolved apart just enough to be considered a new species. It is still under debate if they warrant a new species yet, or even a subspecies, so for now I'll speak about them as the same species, but certainly in the future we will see them become a whole different species altogether. Together. The same goes for the Japanese Malib viridis. Some consider them a subspecies as they look quite different with larger heads, but again it's not set in stone and so I speak about all of them as the same species. Now this is where these nudibranchs get really interesting. They feed upon small crabs and other crustaceans on the seafloor, but the method of eating they use is very cool. The head-like blob you see at the front of the animal opens up in a net-like fashion. It contains many little ciliates on the surface that are very sensitive to touch. When it feels something in its net, as it moves across the seafloor, it quickly retracts and captures the poor little crab to be digested. Or, as most crabs are buried in the sand, it will sort of scoop them out of the seafloor and then spit out the sand to get at the poor doomed crustacean. This feeding technique is why the animal needs to live on the seafloor and is restricted to the shallow coastlines. Not much is known about their breeding habits, but nudibranchs are typically hermaphrodites, and so breed asexually, so it's most likely that these nudibranchs do the same. They don't just split in two though, they do actually have to fertilize eggs with sperm. It just happens that both come from the same individual, as they possess both male and female reproductive organs. Other than their head that they use as a fishing net, they also possess another amazing structural adaptation. Most of these individuals have about eight lobes, give or take, down their body that look kind of like legs. These are primarily used to aid the movement of the sea slug by sticking onto seagrass and pulling itself along, but they have another use. When predators attack, the stickiness of the lobes means that they can stick to their attackers and then they are able to detach them from their bodies, allowing the nudibranch to escape and slowing down the predator as it has a large sticky lobe stuck to its skin. Other than pulling itself along in seagrass, the lobes aren't very good for walking or swimming along the seabed, and so it moves in a different way. They are able to swing their tails all the way round to touch their heads, and so they will violently swing side to side to propel themselves through the water. In the wild, they are preyed upon by many things, as they are relatively slow and nice and soft and easy to eat. Anything from dogfish to bigger sharks to octopuses might prey upon them, but it all depends upon their natural predators in the area of the world they live in, as these are a very spread out species. Humans don't pose much of a threat. We don't hunt or consume them, as they have very little value to us. 
The biggest threat we pose is people seeing them and picking them up at the beach or when diving or snorkeling in the shallows. This can harm them as they will try to detach their sticky lobes which can then impact their mobility, so if you do see one, please leave it alone. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.